Well, for Christmas, I got one of the new uh, mini kind of GoPro, the Hero 4 Session, which is real awesome for taking like any video outside. But what I really want to do with it is be able to take video from the air. Unfortunately, I uh, only have a Sima X5C, which is not actually strong enough to lift something like a GoPro, even the light GoPro like this by itself. The good news is that I have two of them. So I don't know yet whether it's going to work, but I'm going to attempt to tie both of these together and actually fly the GoPro on a double drone. Don't know if that's possible. We'll find out. All right, so the Sima by itself with all excess weight stripped off without actually like taking apart the frame weighs about 80 grams um, or gram force I guess because it's weight and the thrust turn this on It's about 108 gram force. So to be safe, subtract a little bit from that. We'll say we sure we can get 90 or maybe 100 gram force of thrust out of one Simo with a new battery. So not only do these need to be able to combine thrust, but the control systems to actually keep it stable and make it fly where you want it to, uh, both need to work when once they're tied together so once it's actually an octocopter of sorts the uh, entertaining thing about these Simas is that if you're careful you can get two of them to sync to the same controller except even once you do that they don't always do the same thing this one's got a lot more weight on it than this guy so I'm gonna strip them down and make them as even as they can possibly be. Now, one of them is certainly a lot more energetic than the other, but the really important thing is that they turn together. And they seem to be doing that all right. Oh, until that happens. <laughs> That's kind of what they'll look like in a minute. So to attach these two drones together, they can either go above each other like that, and they'd probably get stuck in each other's downwash a little bit, or conversely, they could go next to each other or in front of each other. Uh, either way, you're going to have the outermost motors working really hard and it might be kind of strange to see how it stabilizes when that happens. So you either go for less thrust and more stable or more thrust and less stable. I'm going to start sideways and just see what the stability looks like. And I think that to start that, I'm going to try to attach it together with some skewers. All right, this has to be the uh, the derpiest octocopter in history. But ideally, these uh, flight, the freight controllers in both drones will sort of correct for each other and keep the entire assembly level. And hopefully, the 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 place where they will fight is in rotation. But hopefully, they keep each other level. So we'll find out. Oh yeah, oh man, that's floppy. Wow, oh shoot. 
Yeah, so that's not entirely stable. <laughs> Wow. Very unstable. All right. Um, hmm. Okay, so I had to go for the, the more thrust method first, but uh, that clearly didn't work. So now I'm gonna try to stack them and see if I can get them far enough apart. Well, first get it stable. If I can get it stably flying with two coupled quadcopters, I will be very happy. And uh, then I need to get them far enough apart that they don't get stuck in each other's downwash. And I actually get the improvement in thrust that will let me lift a GoPro. And if this doesn't look destined to fall out of the sky, I'm not sure if anything can. <laughs> All right, here's take two with vertically stacked drones. I also have an audience this time. <laughs> That's not half bad. It's a lot better than, you should have seen the other one. Shoot, that almost looks like it was supposed to be that way. <coughs> should I try to do a flip? <coughs> no. <coughs> Since one of those jumps is mine. Right. Oh, it's still not the easiest thing to control. <laughs> okay, take two. Well, like two B. Oh, it wants to. If that were more rigid, I think it would work. Oh, not gonna happen. It's so close. Nope. We could probably just throw it in the air and get footage. No, I want to not do that. Oh, like this. Good picture of the house that way, right? It didn't? No. <clears throat> okay, so tying the drones together with rigid supports did not work very well because when the flight controllers were fighting against each other, all the energy that was lost trying to keep the thing stable meant that there actually wasn't enough thrust to hold the entire uh, assembly up. So I last night started to play with uh, actually tying them together with string, with a piece of tape down here weighs as much as the camera does exactly. So. Uh, that's nice to test with, but I am encountering some problems with this even because these drones, I mean, they can only apply thrust, uh, I guess, normal to their surface. So you got to try to uh, 
put the string so that when they're pulling on it, it's going to be exactly in that normal. Otherwise, it'll fly off in one direction crazily. And uh, that's the problem that I'm fighting right now. You can see, every time that it sets the limit of the cable, it starts flying in a different direction. And there's very little way to control it. So trying to tie two drones together in order to lift a GoPro uh, was not as successful as I'd hoped, to put it mildly. Although I did learn something about, you know, how the drones will interact and it was interesting. But uh, it still leaves me with wanting to be able to take aerial pictures with the GoPro. So I cheated. I attached the, uh, the GoPro with the, uh, the floaty on it so that if it hits the ground it's not going to break um, to a clip to a golf ball retriever, and golf ball retrievers are really great. I always carry one in my car in order to get drawn out of a tree if it gets stuck. But uh, this has effectively become uh, one of the largest selfie sticks probably in existence. So I can just kind of hold this in the air and uh, take all the pictures I want. It's not as good as a drone, but it's pretty close.